Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what part of the world you're joining for, uh, from. Thank you for joining us on this webinar on clicking your follow bots with false data. And uh, give us just one minute to get started. We are just waiting for a couple of more people to join. Okay, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Sumit Behel, Senior Product uh, Marketing Manager here at Cloudflare based out of San Francisco office, and I'm super excited to have you all over here. I'm co-presenting this webinar on tricking crawler bots uh, with false data with uh, Mehmet Taskia. Hi, Mehmet. Can you please introduce yourself to our wonderful audience? Hello, Sumit, and hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mehmet, and I work as a uh, cloud and DevOps consultant in Cloya. And today, uh, we'll be doing a demo about how to uh, protect your content with Cloudflare workers and bot management. Thank you, Sumit. Thank you, Mehmet. So some quick housekeeping rules. Uh, the recording of this uh, webinar will be shared with you, and so would be the slides. And we would have plenty of time at the end of our session to answer any of your questions. But please uh, put your questions in the Q&A box on the right-hand side of the screen at any time you want. In this webinar, we'll talk about the evolution of bots, uh, how they impact your business, some common bot attacks. Then we'll get into the specific of follow bots followed by live demo uh, by Mehmet where he will showcase some of the bot mitigation techniques. But before I get into the bot world, for those who don't know about Cloudflare, I would like to give you a quick overview about our product portfolio. A comprehensive cloud-based platform includes purpose-built products for security, performance, and reliability in one unified solution. On the security side, we have a web application firewall, rate limiting, bot management, layer three, layer four, and layer seven DDoS protection. On the performance and reliability side, we are a global CDN provider with network that spans across 200 cities in more than 95 countries. Other than that, we offer solutions for content caching, managed DNS service, load balancing, mobile and image optimization. On the right-hand side of the slide, you see Cloudflare for Teams, which is our newer offering, uh, where we have the access product that provides secure remote access to internal applications without VPN. And Cloudflare Great, great Product, uh, which provides malware protection for your employees and direct internet access to branch office. We also provide a platform that makes it easy to build service serverless application using edge computing while providing meaningful insights and analytics uh, on the web access. So now let's get, to, let's get into the bot world. As you know, bots are automated programs designed to perform a specific task. These bots execute tasks over and over again at a much faster rate than human could. They interact with the web page, they click on the marketing ads, fill out form, click on links, scan text, and download documents or download content, and much more. As you look at the evolution of the bots, around five to seven years back, there were these basic bots that originated from a limited number of static IP addresses, would simply gather data, would have a repetitive pattern, and were easy to detect. But as years have progressed, bots have gotten mature. They could change source IP address or originate from a legitimate customer device. And today's bot can mimic human behavior. So when we humans browse a website, we use nonlinear mouse movements, we pause, and sophisticated bot can really mimic this, these behaviors. So the key challenge with dedicated uh, with detecting bots is that being able to classify humans 
and bad bots. And since bad bots have become sophisticated, they look like real users on the internet. The other part of the challenge is there are good bots that businesses need, such as the search engine crawlers, uh, which are operated by search engines like Google, Bing, Baidu. And these bots help with search engine optimization so that the website shows up higher in web search results. Now, there are partner bots, uh, which is the traffic coming from partners. An example of that would be American Airlines or Turkish Airlines have partners such as Expedia, Priceline, um, from where the consumers, or consumers basically book their tickets. Now, there are site monitoring bots that monitor system outages, alert the user of the major changes are downtime, and so on. But the key thing is that these good bots should be allowed selectively based on the business requirement. And I say selectively because while you need some of these good bots, you don't need all the good bots scraping your website. For example, if you do not have a customer in China, then even if a good, there's a good bot that is originating from China and scraping your website, it's not idle for your business. Now, if you look at some of the common bot attacks, oh, sorry, I, there was a bit. Um, yeah, so I want to talk about the bad bots. Uh, bad bots, on the other hand, impact your sales, your revenue, and your end user experience or disrupt your services. And these bad bots need to be blocked or redirected. And in the upcoming slides, I'll talk about why you would want to redirect some of the bad robots and not just block them. Now there are scraper bots uh, that will steal your original content and reprint it on various websites without permission. Or they might steal your price and product catalog so that they undermine the peer pricing strategy. There are spam bots that would post spam comments on the website. Uh, then on the bad bots, there are click bots. These will intentionally click on your advertisement, costing you money for any fraudulent clicks. Uh, clicks. Uh, there are fake Google bots that would spoof the real Google bot. And so on, there, there are lots and lots of bad bots out there. So now if you look at some of the common bot attacks uh, that are done by these bad bots. So the first one is uh, credential stuffing attack. In this attack, the bots take over an account by automatically applying previously stolen credentials. And this happens because we as digital online users often reuse our credentials across numerous login pages, such as uh, email, bank accounts, credit card accounts. If you kind of spend a minute and think through, we as users have around six or seven passwords that we would have reused across 40 or 50 sites. And even if one of that site is not that well secure and your email, your credentials get uh, hacked, what a hacker has to do has to do is basically apply those credentials on some of the other sites. And if you have used the same credentials on the other site, they get lucky and they would get access to the account because these are legitimate credentials. And I have been culprit of this, and I think most of us over here kind of users reuse their password, right? So that's the key challenge with the credential stuffing attack. And the intent over here is uh, to perform fraudulent transactions steal sensitive data or compromise personal information. But to give you an example of some of the common bot attacks, uh, if you would have heard recently, Disney suffered from this credential attack. So in, 2000, in November of 2019, Disney launched their on-demand subscription-based streaming service called Disney Plus. 
and on the day of their launch, they were hit by the potential stuffing attack. In this case, uh, there were malicious bots that applied stolen credentials uh, and took over the customers' accounts and stole sensitive data. Another recent example is uh, an attack on Zoom, uh, the video conferencing company, um, where over 500,000 Zoom passwords were on the dark web for less than a cent each. Uh, this, didn't, this didn't mean that Zoom got hacked, but the accounts were obtained using credential stuffing where hacker, hackers used passwords and email leaked in the previous data register. Now, if you look at inventory holding, inventory holding bots are designed to disrupt the availability of inventory. And these bots constantly add high demand and limited supply items to shopping carts without ever completing a purchase. So they artificially deplete the retailer's inventory and later resell at a higher price if they would have purchased uh, uh, some of the inventory. Like in some cases, they would buy a certain amount of inventory and just resell that. We have a customer of ours, uh, that's Sneaker and Stuff, and they suffered from this inventory holding attack before they moved to Cloudflare. So as the name suggests, Sneakers and Stuff, uh, they are in sneaker business, and sneakers are in huge demand. So typically when they would launch, they would be sold out on the same day. So they have limited quantity stock, and at the same time, the demand is very high. So in this case, their bots would come and uh, they wouldn't allow legitimate users to buy the inventory, whereas they would buy the inventory. And some of you might think that, okay, uh, if the bots are buying, they are still buying, right? But the challenge over here is, first, when bots are buying, they are, their legitimate users are not getting to buy. So it's a bad user experience because now they would have to go outside on some other site and then they have to buy at a higher price. So it kind of breaks the customer trust and kind of affects your brand name. And the other thing is the bot traffic that is coming on the real website. And in this case, it was 70% of the traffic was bought. And this increase in traffic means spot traffic means there's an infrastructure cost that you're paying. And these costs are huge. So it's essentially, if you could stop those bad bots coming on the website, uh, you could save a lot on the infrastructure cost. Now, if we talk about content scraping, um, if you have a public-facing website, you would have experienced crawler bots that scrape continuously um, that continuously uh, crawl on your website to capture pricing information, product description, text images, uh, um, or HTML code, CSS code, and so on. And what these bots do is basically they'll often repurpose the content uh, that you have published for their own website, uh, the website which is hosted by the hacker, uh, for malicious purpose. So they would kind of either undermine your pricing strategy or they would take away your uh, SEO traffic. That's just the search engine optimization traffic by duplicating the content. And they'll do all sort of copyright violations uh, and they're stealing your organic traffic. And the more sophisticated bots, can, uh, scraper bots can use JavaScript to fill out forms on your website and download any gated content as Again, an example over here of one of our customers who is uh, uh, they are, uh, called AngelList. They are the world's largest startup community. And they manage over $1 billion in assets uh, that is uh, and supporting over 2 million candidates in their job search. So it's basically a job search firm. And they, they kind of got into this issue where they had bots coming in on their uh, website and were scraping proprietary information, that is uh, information about the candidates, as you may, uh, the startup and investor profile, uh, job listings, and more. Now, if you look at the credit card stuffing attack, uh, 
over here, we have automated bots that attempt to validate stolen credentials to make fraudulent purchases, transfer money, or cash out those cards. Before, and before performing these uh, large transactions of selling the validated cards on the dark web, hackers use stolen credit card and make small value purchases on less secure websites. And most often these carding or uh, the credit card stuffing attack go undetected by the merchant and even by the card holder until it is too late. That is the purchase has been made and the money has been transferred. When you look at the content spamming bot, uh, these bots fill out uh, comments uh, and forms with hostile edit. They would post fake comments, uh, fake reviews, uh, inappropriate content or even advertise too good to be too, too offers to lure your users on clicking some of the malicious link and then triggering a man in the middle attack or a phishing attack. The intention typically is to steal traffic and drive away customers by sending them to other sites, spread malware or sabotage the reputation of the business. And uh, the last common bot attack is application DDoS. And the goal over here is service disruption. And this service disruption is done by stressing the application, by stressing the origin server. Now, if you look at all the use cases that we have covered so far, they require some sort of processing. It is not sim as simple as retrieving a static element from the origin. These requests generally would hit the origin and kick off some routines that consume resources. And at times, whether it is due to an overzealous box or a bot just landing at a bad time, like a peak hour, this can overwhelm the origin and knock them offline. So what, what can we do to kind of uh, mitigate uh, these bots, right? And, uh, our bot, Cloudflare bot management solution provides many mitigation options such as uh, uh, logging, bypassing, uh, allowing the bots to go through and then uh, they, they can be kind of further looked up by our firewall rules. The option for uh, challenging the bots through capture or JavaScript uh, challenge and uh, for sure, blocking those bots, that is denying them access to the site. But a lot of times, this, these mitigation options are not enough, and that is where our Cloudflare worker products comes into play. And that is where we would kind of also talk about how we trick these bots. So Cloudflare workers, uh, on the other hand, provides you as a customer or the business owner, the flexibility to do whatever you want to do with the request based on the bot score. So what is workers? Workers is, uh, is essentially it enables uh, you as a customer to create custom security logic. So Cloudflare Workers provides a lightweight JavaScript execution environment that allows developers to augment existing application or create a new one without configuring or maintaining infrastructure. And developers can deploy serverless JavaScript application on Cloudflare Global Net Cloud Network where they can seamlessly um, scale and be closer to the user. So I mentioned that Cloudflare Workers provides full flexibility and control. And uh, I would kind of like to go into some of the details of this. Like uh, with Cloudflare Workers, uh, uh, you could serve an alternative content to the bots based on the score. So what we do is we basically, every bot or every request that is coming in, it gets a score. And uh, based on the score, we determine if it's a bot or if it's a real human user. And to determine that score, it has to go through various engines 
uh, which is uh, heuristic engines, finger, which is uh, fingerprinting, behavioral analysis, machine learning. And once we determine it is a bot, with cloud services, we get this flexibility. Okay, we are serving it with an alternate content, or we are just stalling the bot and make it the, so that the page load for the bot is super slow. Or uh, we can have them authenticate. And there are a bunch of other options that can be done with the, uh, with cloud services. It could be redirecting to some other page. But the question is, why would you want to do all of this? which is redirect, stall the blog, uh, bot, authenticate them. Why not just block those bots, right? But there are several reasons for that. And if you look into it, uh, you want to trick the bot and make sure that they think that they have been successful, uh, but you have provided them with incorrect information. So if you're e-commerce, uh, if you have an e-commerce website and uh, the bots are coming on your website looking for your surprising information, now you give them incorrect pricing information. So any information that they get kind of becomes meaningless for them to kind of use it in their environment. So they won't be able to undermine your pricing strategy or your product strategy. And when you block the bots instead, if they are persistent, they will change their tactics and come back and then every time you will be a fire in a firefighting board. And some cases you would have, you can serve them content uh, based on, uh, serve them alternate content based on, uh, based on the score. Like you don't serve ads to bots that get low score. Uh, you could stall the bot request, uh, have them authenticate. Then in such cases, there's extra resources that are utilized at the bot's end. And increase, which increases the cost for the hacker for using these bots, and then they are demotivated. Right? So, um, so the bottom line over here is uh, blocking is definitely there as an option, but you at times there's definitely a need to kind of do multiple things uh, before blocking the bot, or just kind of understanding what the bot is doing so that you could have the correct actions as you would want. So with that, I would pass it on to him uh, to showcase his slides and then get into the demo. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sumit. Uh, hello again. Uh, before the demo, I want to talk about a little bit more about crawlers. So uh, what's really wrong with crawlers? Uh, imagine you have an e-commerce business and you have lots of competitors. Uh, in, in this scenario, maybe your power on the price is your biggest asset. So uh, you can play with your price tags, make some campaigns, but uh, what if your opponent knows every move you make? Uh, so you lost your competitive advantage in this scenario. Or uh, you have a video platform and bots are crawling your API, may, and they may even serve your CDN content. Or uh, I even saw scenarios, people white labeling these kind of websites to uh, earn money with in-app advertisements. So uh, we are going to see how to tackle trick, trick the bots uh, in these scenarios. So uh, why are we doing this with Cloudflare? Uh, because uh, Cloudflare has really good insight on what's going on in internet. It can detect anomalies in your property also with the help of workers, uh, the capabilities of Cloudflare is really expanded. Uh, the main thing with the bot management tool is uh, there is no JavaScript injections on your website. Most most of other solutions using JavaScript injections, but uh, in that case, uh, your API is uh, still vulnerable. So, uh, and also, just, not just with bots, but uh, with the help of global analysis of network, Cloudflare can update WAF rules, firewall rules without even you notice it. So it's an extra layer of security, in my opinion. Uh, so uh, let's look at the uh, graph to see what we'll be building today. So I was still coming to your Cloudflare property, uh, Cloudflare quickly checks its score to determine its bot or not. Uh, if it's a bot, we will serve a different content. If it's not a bot, we will 
do nothing. So right now uh, I'm starting my screen share. Uh, I will go into detail how, how we will implement this. Uh, I think it's on now. Uh, for the demo purposes, I prepared a, a products JSON. It's a simple file. Uh, mock, it's a mock API. I won't uh, connect it to the real API, but it, this will uh, be enough for the demo. Uh, at first, you, you need to activate bot management for your property. Uh, it's under the firewall. Uh, the activation is really straightforward. You just activate bot management and boom, it's ready. Uh, but without diving just directly to the workers manipulating responses, uh, there's really one important thing to do. In, uh, first, you need to monitor your network traffic to see who, who is getting what score. Uh, this is really important because uh, you don't want to uh, serve different content to uh, legitimate users. Uh, for that reason, uh, I advise you to uh, monitor a couple of weeks uh, to see what's going on, who is getting what scores. After that, uh, we can go ahead and write our uh, workers. So I assume uh, you inspected the logs and try, try to decide uh, go on with workers. So how do we uh, deploy or work with workers? Cloudflare has a really neat tool called Wrangler CLI. Uh, uh, you can do a, everything. You can manage all of your worker logic with this CLI. Uh, you can install it in with NPM. Uh, it's under Cloudflare Wrangler. Uh, I'm not going to. Uh, install it right now, uh, because I have it already. Uh, after you install, you have to configure it uh, with your API token. Uh, again, I'm not going to do that again, because I don't want to expose my API tokens. Uh, after setting up Wrangler, uh, uh, we can move with the power of Cloudflare template gallery. Uh, I want to show you this one first because it has really good examples to start with. Uh, for this scenario, I started modify response template, but uh, I'm not going to write from zero to it. Uh, I already uh, write the code for it and make it a template. So we are going to use that uh, today. Uh, before start using, I want to show you the code, what it does. Uh, so the thing is, uh, debugging in workers may be a little tricky. For that reason, uh, we are going to use Sentry. Uh, maybe some of you heard Sentry. It's an exception tool. It catches our exceptions, reports our exceptions back to us. So we are going to use that to see if any exception occurs in our uh, worker logic. So this is uh, where the magic happens. Uh, when request uh, arrives at Cloudflare, it's going to fetch from uh, origin. Uh, we are getting the client trust score, and uh, we decided that 30 will be enough for us. So uh, if the client score is less than 30, we are going to change the price values of our APIs to bump them to make it seem like higher. So this, uh, after that, I'm going to synthesize a JSON response and uh, adding client trust score back to the request uh, to see, uh, just for you to see how it calculates uh, the number. Uh, so what uh, I mentioned the Sentry tool. Uh, we are going to use a third-party plugin for that. It's called Pigeon. So this is what you get uh, if you uh, any error happens. So I'm going to just create a new worker project for 
my business. So I'm writing Wrangler Generate uh, and give it a name, like maybe price, price change and give the GitHub URL. Uh, and also you can find this project in Cloya's GitHub. Uh, I'm generating the project. Uh, after the after generating project, we gotta do make some changes. Like uh, it has some configuration file called Wrangler Tomo. Uh, we have to enter our Cloudflare account ID here. Uh, you can get account ID from your account. Mm. It's, this is my account ID, so uh, I'm adding that. Uh, as I said, you can even manage your routes or zones from there, but uh, we will do manually for the sake of tutorial. Uh, we have to edit our uh, Sentry DSM and uh, to get the exceptions if anything occurs. I'm creating a new Sentry project. Uh, call it a webinar test. And all I need is this uh, in Sentry DSM. So I'm adding these also here. The rest is the same. Uh, we can start publishing our worker. Uh, I will show my account. It's now empty. There are no workers in it right now. Uh, all I have to do is just write render publish. It installs npm packages, builds the project, and sends it to the Cloudflare. So if I refresh the page, I will see my worker show up in here. Uh, it has a good editor, but uh, since we are using a third-party package, uh, it is it is using Webpack to build this. So we can't really use this for this project, but it is a really good uh, playground area. You can even test your uh, endpoints within. So after deploying our worker, we have to uh, assign it to this path, like right now, it is not doing anything. Uh, we can even try curl to that to see if anything is changing. No, no, it's just they are getting all your price information right now. Uh, we have to assign this worker to a route to uh, trigger worker when request came to this path. Uh, I want to restrict it to the one pet because uh, maybe you want to protect only one endpoint. There's no need to run it on every endpoint. So uh, I'm writing the my endpoint and save. Uh, so when I save it, uh, whenever a request comes to the products endpoint, uh, it will trigger my price change worker. Uh, and right now, we should see some things will change if I try to mimic bots. Uh, at first, I want to use a HTTP uh, CLI tool to send a kind of legitimate request to see how to see its client. So uh, when I look to the response, I see the Cloudflare assigned 32 client trust score, so yeah, it's kind of legitimate user. As we see, the prices are all the same, 58, 64, 42, maybe. Uh, so uh, if I do some really dummy uh, curl request to this endpoint, uh, because the curl is, there are no, uh, special user agents, etc. So I expect it will get really low value from Cloudflare. So when I run curl, 
uh, we see the client trust score getting one and uh, let's look at our prices Boom. it was 58 now it's 97 the second price was uh, 64 now uh, there are lots of sophisticated bots it is really not easy to simulate every bot but uh, we can see like we really generic curl gets the lowest possible value well it will change uh with bots but since cloudflare always inspecting the networks uh there will be no uh it, it will not be your concern the cloudflare will be assigning the trust scores and it will work like this but remember uh, you should always check your logs to see the network to see the uh, trust scores to, to make sure everything works perfect for your end user. Uh, so uh, this was the demo about workers. Uh, I want to give back to the summit so we can name it so we can maybe continue with the uh, questions. Hey, thanks Ahmed, for the uh, wonderful demo. Um, really appreciate that. Uh, I'm just looking at some of the questions that we have. And uh, the first one is, can I use a web application firewall or rate limiting to block box? Um, the answer is kind of no, uh, just because these are different products designed to do a specific thing. So if, if you look at VAF, uh, they are designed to defend against the SQL injection, cross-site scripting, uh, OS top 10, the zero-day attacks uh, uh, by imposing policies uh, that is preventing specific IP address range, geolocations, and so on. Uh, but with bots becoming so sophisticated, uh, they can rotate through multiple million of IP addresses. Uh, they can mimic human behavior. So in today's world, with bots being so sophisticated, uh, I don't feel uh, that the VAP is the right product. At the same time, if we look at rate limiting, rate limiting can block uh, simplistic bots uh, that are making excessive requests. Uh, but when it comes to sophisticated bots, again, the rate limiting is going to fail. And with rate limiting, it's typically if you have your bank or some login sites where you have like three apps, four or five times you can uh, try a password and then you got, get logged out. What bots can do is they can go low and slow. So if you have a rate limiting set for five attempts per minute, they will do four attempts per minute. Um, so that way they would be able to evade the, the rate limiting. So that's where there's a need for a dedicated bot management solution. Uh, the other question that we have is, uh, can we use our custom certificates with Cloudflare? Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, but uh, then, uh, do you have some examples or some stories around uh, the custom certificates with Cloudflare? Yeah, the people, uh, the customers sometimes need to uh, just push their existing certificates to Cloudflare. This is the question we get a lot, but like you said, the short answer is yes, but depends on what you really uh, trying to achieve. It may even not need to use your custom certificate, but uh, it depends on the scenario, but yes, you, know, you can use your own custom certificates. Uh, cool. The other question is, uh, what are some of the signs that I should look for uh, to know that I have bots uh, on my website? Uh, as I said earlier, if you have a public-facing website, you would for sure have bots. But you need to look into your analytics and see what, what does it say. It, and and there's some, some of these signs are kind of... Uh, pretty visible. Like, for example, 
uh, if you are seeing a higher infrastructure cost with no increase in your business, uh, then that is kind of alarming, and you would want to see if there are bots that are coming on your website, uh, uh, and uh, you are necessarily and your billing for storage and computers going up uh, because these bots are ultimately coming on your website and accessing the resources, which is increasing your cost. Uh, you could look into if there are unusual purchases uh, that are happening, which are of, uh, especially for low volume and high demand inventory. Um, the other thing you could look for is if there are more customer complaints that are happening, maybe due to increased uh, failed login attempts. And this could be because of the prediction stuffing attack that I kind of talked about earlier, where somebody is kind of uh, using your stolen credentials or something of that sort. And then there are other things which you can look for. If, uh, there's a marketing spend that you have, uh, advertising that you're doing, and it's not giving you the results that you were hoping for. You're even close to that. And then there might be bots that are just clicking on your ads uh, or your videos, and uh, it's uh, driving up your paper click. Now, uh, the next question is for you, um, and it is on. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 seeing the question right now. The the the, the question is, uh, how do you detect bots on APIs? Do you need SDK integration? Uh, no, uh, no, there is no need an SDK integration, but like I said, uh, you really need to monitor your traffic to get the best results of it because it can uh, maybe tricky just dive into it. You need to monitor your traffic, but we don't uh, need an SDK integration. Uh, I have another question in here. Uh, can we manipulate bot scoring algorithms or the rules that creates final score? Or even some WAF rule sets may have false positive rules that blocks normal traffic. Uh, this is a, the a hard part of the uh, configuring these kinds of things. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, I don't think you can manipulate the algorithms. The Cloudflare uh, run the algorithms on that, but do you have any insight on that, Sumit? Uh, uh, the, the other question is, uh, can you get more detail about the client score? Uh, this is the thing with Cloudflare size, as I said. Uh, you, like, it is the most important thing to monitor and log everything to see. Uh, yeah, th these are the basic. Yeah, th these are the uh, questions a lot of got asked. But like I said, you gotta monitor and act really carefully about these kinds of things. Uh, I think we got all the questions. If anyone has any more questions, you can go ahead and ask us right now. Uh, Okay, um, I think uh, there's one last question that has come in, which is, uh, is multi-factor authentication effective against bots? Um, uh, as I said earlier, um, you need multiple techniques to block these bots. <clears throat> and if you look at multi-factor authentication or capture also for that matter, they don't work for all the bot management use cases. Now, if you look at content scraping, when somebody coming on your website and stealing your content, um, uh, the bots coming on your website, um, or content spamming, when they are coming on the website and putting some comments, 
multi factor authentication doesn't work for this use cases and it works for limited use cases when you specifically have to log in and even with that uh, it adds a lot of friction so if you are an e-commerce company or a travel company you wouldn't want uh, to add multi factor authentication for uh, each and every login request that is coming in it at times makes sense for some of the banking and financial institutes uh, but it comes uh, at uh, a cost which is uh, which adds which is adding friction to your uh, user experience um, that's all from the question side i see uh, if there are no more questions um, then we could uh, conclude so thank you all for joining us uh, really appreciate uh, your uh, time um, attending this uh, webinar uh, as i mentioned earlier you would get a recording of uh, this webinar as well as the slide deck and if you have any questions then please feel free to reach out to us thank you thank you everyone